After Lennox Lewis defeated Andrew Gerrard in the fourth round on the 25th of September, 1989. And there's uh, no point at all in continuing to take head punches like that. His next battle took place in 15 days. On October 10th, 1989, a young lion fought Steve Garber at Kingston upon Hull, City Hall, England. Garber's CV also featured clashes with Henry Akinwande. If I should say, trained by Terry Lawless, all a big swinging right there from Garber. You cast your mind back. Steve Garber has shared the ring with Lennox Lewis. And Carl Gaffney. The champs come colours against Carl Gaffney from Leeds. We've seen Gaffney a couple of times for the first time when he beat Sean Hunter down in London. Stiff left hands from Gaffney. Takes a right back from Garber. Frank Maloney, manager of Lennox Lewis, explained what had happened when Steve Garber pushed his prospect before the first bell of a fight in Hull. They were being introduced in the ring and Steve got in his face and pushed him. Lennox was shocked. It was just his fourth fight and nobody else had tried anything quite like it. It was a little gesture for Steve to assess what the man was made of. He went mad. I've never seen him lose it like that before. He went out and smashed poor Steve to bits. Lennox Lewis had finished Garber in just 90 seconds. It was fourth fight of Lennox Lewis with his manager Maloney. When Lennox Lewis entered the ring on November 5, 1989 at Royal Albert Hall, London, he was already on a win streak with four victories as a professional, with all of his wins came by way of knockout. His opponent was USA boxer Melvin Epps with the record of 14 victories, 19 losses, and one draw. Epps started with the left jab to the body and threw wide right hook. Lewis tried to lock him down in the corner. Rapid hook to the body and another one. Melvin lost his balance and fell down to canvas. Lennox Lewis hurling contemptuously Melvin Epps to the canvas. No count. Bring at him as he reclined on the... Low blow from Lewis. Low, low, low. Melvin was fast, but not enough, so he took that body shot in the corner. Epps tried to knock down his opponent, but missed. Well, Lewis just needs to calm down just a little bit, and that's what Tony Walker is telling them. Just settle down. Red Trunk's fighter wasn't so energetic as at the start and Lion added a shot to his leg so it was easier to catch the prey. At eight times as many fights as Lewis. Great left jab from the corner depths. He's just stay out of trouble, poke the left jab out, and that was a good one. And again, Melvin avoided faith of a ragdoll, but he couldn't avoid two powerful shots to the body. No. Epps getting a little bit aggrieved. Lennox showed his dominance. At the moment, pretty it's not. And once again, Lewis warned for low blows. Now I tell you, it would be sensational if he got himself disqualified here. Eh? It's not in the script. Well, I tell you, this is my first live glimpse of Lennox Lewis. Here is the man. There you go, 24 years of age, Melvin Epps. His opponent. There is the Epps corner. 31 years of age, obviously not ranked in Great Britain. Well, round two. As the second round began, Lewis pushed his rival to the ropes, even tried to chop him down. Melvin fought back with aggression. Lennox awarded him with smile. Lyon attacked viciously but turned his back to the opponent. Melvin, full of anger, missed with the right hook and tried to continue with the left, while referee hold his hand, so he was disqualified for disobedience. Uh, I don't believe it. I do not believe it. But that really ranks among the strangest. Sympathy for Melvin Epps. I guess Lennox Lewis didn't do much wrong. But that's boxing. Epps was really confused. Quite extraordinary. Programs, rubbish being thrown into the ring. That is the most outrageous decision. Epps cannot understand it. And I must confess, neither can I. In 30 seconds of round two, the referee has disqualified Epps 
for not obeying the referee's instructions. It's qualified officially for not obeying the referee's instructions. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, for the loser and for Lennox Lewis, both boxers. It was the fifth successful fight for Lennox Lewis. The 31-year-old Greg Gorill, with the record of 20 victories and 7 losses, from Wichita, Kansas, fought his 24-year-old rival, Lennox Lewis, on 18 December 1989, at Memorial Auditorium, Kitchener, Canada. Lennox raised in Kitchener, also his amateur career started there. The 6-foot, 5-inch Lewis, who weighted in at 226 pounds, dwarfed his 5'11", 202-pound opponent. Lynch, and I ask you to break, I want you to break at my command. Is that understood? Shake hands now. Good luck to both of you. From the beginning, Gorel started to stalking Lewis. Fight of the tremendous heavyweight prospect against the 31-year-old tubby white American southpaw Greg Gorel with a record of 21 wins and 60 feats. And every conceivable physical advantage here to Lewis. He's five inches taller and he's 24 pounds heavier. Lewis threw a big amount of punches in the first minute of the first round. Well, Gorel already shaking his head. And Lewis seems to have a pretty open target, whether it's to the body or the head, that's a stumble. Gorel wasn't so active. He tried to counter-attacking his opponent, but not really successful. Well, even at this stage, early into the fight, it's difficult to see what sort of chance Gorel has got here. Lewis waiting for the chance to shoot the right across. In the last minute of the first, Lennox showed a great combination that wobbled Gorilla. That's the right hand, the one he's been waiting. Instant reaction. That hurt. And in the next 30 seconds, Lion fainted and dropped him on the canvas. Showing him the right again. Oh, what a good one. Bit flashy. There it goes. And then, pile driven right through to the chin. Greg got up immediately. Well, well, there may not be time for Lewis to finish it in this round. In the last seconds, Lennox performed a series of unanswered blows. In the second, there's the bell. At the start of the second, Lewis showed a massacre with his opponent on the ropes. If it can be avoided, is to take that right hand again to the chin. And Lewis is going to the finish. Well, when he's in action like this, he really does look like a good prospect. But... Greg coped with such pressure, but turned defensive. It's purely a matter of survival now for all the American. I wonder why Lewis isn't setting up another of those big attacks. Great counterattack. Even tried to throw Lewis on the canvas. Well, that's an ungainly sight. Not for the wrong. This is where you think you've got nothing to beat, and suddenly things slip away from you. And there's no question that Lewis has eased right off. A disappointing second round for the Lennox uh, Lewis corner. They would have hoped that he would come out. There's Mum Violet. In the third, Goral charged Lennox. They exchanged with right hands. And Goral beginning to fight back a little bit. Lewis was more aggressive. Lewis has got himself a wonderful deal financially. He's been staked in his professional career by uh, a financial services company. Gave him a six-figure signing on fee. Uh, they've got him a house in Crayford in Kent and a car, and he's getting £500 a week living money. The lion striked with right-hand uppercut while holding his opponent's neck. Referee reacted momentary. Incident that uh, brought the referee's intervention here. He holds him around the back of the neck with the left hand, as you can see, turns him, and while he's still holding him, he gives him the right. And that was a blatant foul, and the referee moved in very quickly. Dissatisfied Greg tried to do some damage from the inside, but unsuccessfully. Left hand and hitting him with the right, and that of course is a foul. And he's doing it again. 
Michael. Lennox pushed Gorol to the ropes with his big right hand, afterwards performing a stunning combination with his work as a fighter. That's a good attack. And again, Gorilla handled that blows, even became more aggressive. But it wasn't a problem for Lennox Lewis. When he went to the All right, 84 easy, Olympics in Los Angeles, and he lost in the quarterfinals there to Terrell Biggs, the man that uh, Gary Mason beat a few weeks ago in London. It looked like they both were low on gas till the end of the third. So much of that weight is uh, waste weight on Gorilla. Lennox started fourth round aggressively with power punches. Rounds is as far. Gorel tried to answer that, but without any success. Completed. None of them got beyond the fourth. Gorel appeared very briefly in Europe last year in berck sur mer on the coast of northern France. Injury. And Wamber, of course, has gone on to become the European Cruiserweight Champion. And the whistles are beginning to come now because people are sensing that uh, he's not going about his work as well as he might. Now, he really is messing about. He really can do a dramatic job when he wants to in Seoul, for instance, in the Olympics. Lewis continued to dominating his rival, who was on the ropes again. In only 34 seconds. One on the break there. So. Putting in. Near the end of the fourth, Greg earned some points with his short hands. That will be granted. And I know that Frank Maloney hopes very much that before the end of the held, of course, by Gary Mason. So far is a pretty disappointing performance by Lewis against an opponent who's easy to hit and John Davenport, the trainer, is giving him a little bit of a talking to. When fifth round began, it seems that Lewis was going for a knockout, punching constantly. Well, that's better. A little bit of a G up from the corner and he's going about his work a lot better now. Even cut Gorel's eyebrow with powerful right hand. Oh, that was a good right hand. Greg was pushed to the ropes, missing right uppercut with the left hook, and the hard right knocked him down. And he's in trouble. Another right, and he's over. One more look at this finish. He had nothing left at all, Gorel. All the punches were coming through. And uh, the referee. Hey. Gorilla got up at the count of six, but the referee stopped the fight. Seven. I don't think he's going to get any further. Okay, you don't want to quit. Kitchener, Ontario, Lennox Lewis, the super heavyweight gold medalist at the Seoul Olympics, ran his professional record to 6-0 Monday night with a fifth-round decision over Greg Gorel. The scheduled eight-round bout was stopped at 51 seconds. His claim to fame is he fought Lennox Lewis, said Melissa Rahman, Gorel's daughter. Of course he lost. That was always kind of a joke we made about it. But he fought him really hard. Even though the 1989 bout was a mismatch between a tall, muscular fighter that would one day become a world champion and a stocky underdog that went on to become co-owner of Walt's Refrigeration Services, it lasted five rounds. At the time, no other fighter had lasted more than four rounds against Lewis. Still undefeated, Lennox Lewis! So here's the young heavyweight prospect who is going to make his home and his career in Britain.